Hello everybody, I'm Dave from the Polypad team and in this video I'm going to provide an overview of the input tile and the text area tile. So these tiles are only available inside of authoring mode. So this is a mode where teachers or students or anyone who's making a Polypad for other people to use uh, have access to additional tools and settings inside of this authoring mode. So to turn on authoring mode, I'm going to go to the file tab on the sidebar. So I'll click the file tab and you can see there's this toggle that I can turn on to go into authoring mode. All these additional additional toggles appear, all these checkboxes appear. To learn more about authoring mode in general, there is a link right here that will open our tutorial section on authoring mode. This is really just a brief overview of authoring mode. If you click this link, you'll be brought to a much more detailed and thorough documentation about all of the things you can do inside of authoring mode. But for now, I'll, I'll go to the file tab, make sure authoring mode is on, and I'm going to go to the tile menu. And if I close geometry, you'll notice there's this new section of tiles called authoring tools. If I leave authoring mode, that category is no longer there. So these tiles only appear when authoring mode is turned on under a new section called authoring tools. And you can see the two that I'm going to focus on in this video are the input tile and the text area tile. I'm going to start with the text area tile. I'll drag it out onto the canvas. The purpose of this tile is providing a, a, a text field for students to enter their ideas about some question. So as an author, Maybe I want to say something like uh, explain, oops, you know, explain your thinking here. So I'm going to add a text box. And I'll just say explain your answer maybe to students. So that's the, the start of my instruction for students. Uh, as the author here, I'm in authoring mode. I can move this around. I can change the size of it as I want. Maybe I'll go something like that. I can decide upon the text size that students are going to use. There's a drop down here that's small, medium, large, and extra large. Uh, I'll keep it on medium. And now I'm going to leave authoring mode so you can see what this will look like to a student. Go to the file tab, leave authoring mode. And now when I click on this text area tile, notice that the action bar is not appearing. There's no way to change the font size. Uh, I can't move it around the canvas. All a student is able to do is, is click into the text area and start typing. I think Polypad is a helpful resource for students because, and then I could keep going with my answer. Um, notice the text automatically uh, wraps as I'm entering my answer. And uh, if I add more text and even more here, you'll notice a scroll bar um, appears. When I click out of it, it goes back to the top and I could scroll down to see all that I've written. So that's a really nice way just for students to enter their, their thinking, uh, somewhat of an open response into a single tile on the canvas that, that the author sets and puts in place and is, is locked for students. Uh, there we go. If I go back into authoring mode, uh, I, can, I can move this around now. I can change the size of it. I can decide on the font size again. Maybe I want to make it small. But those are only for authors, not for the students who are putting their answer into the text box. So I'm out of authoring mode. All right, the uh, next thing I want to show is the input tile. So I'll go back into authoring mode. Let me delete this and delete this. Uh, one last piece to show actually on the text area tile is notice there is this placeholder text of start typing. That when I, when I leave authoring mode, that's there, but it's not actually text that the students can, can edit. When I click in here, my cursor goes to the start and I can start my answer. Right. Uh, that, uh, that placeholder text can be changed by the author. So I'll go back into authoring mode, find another one of these to bring onto the canvas. Let me scroll down a bit to move it down here. Uh, notice when I click on the more tools menu, 
there is an input field for this placeholder text. So I could delete it. And then when I go out of authoring mode, uh, oops, let me um, go back in here. Uh, I could say, you know, enter your answer. And then that could be the placeholder text. So you could you can decide what you want that placeholder text to be. All right, I'll, I'll delete these and now talk about how to use the input tile. So the input tile is, uh, the purpose of this is for students to enter a numerical answer to a question, maybe a letter answer, and be able to provide some validation to the students. That's why there's a check uh, on this tile showing you as an author that you'll be able to give validation to students. So um, notice on, on each of these, there's a place to enter the solution of that. So I'm gonna have this be a solution of one, this be a solution of two, this be a solution of three. When I go to the more tools menu, notice the placeholder text is this question mark. So I could either add the question, okay, I, I, I gotta make up some, some questions here. My first question I'm gonna have a zero plus one, right? So that has an answer of one. Uh, I'll copy this and move it over here. And this one is one plus one because I think this, this had an answer of two, right? And this had an answer of three, but I could, if I wanted to, I could change the placeholder text to what I want the question to be, one plus two. Okay, so now, um, because I'm still in authoring mode, right, I can, I can change the size of these, I can make them bigger or smaller, but when I go out of authoring mode, those are locked in place, right? So the students aren't, aren't able to move these. As soon as I click on it, the cursor goes in place of the question mark or on top of the question mark. I can enter my answer. As soon as I click out of this input field, either by pushing return on my keyboard or by clicking on the polypad, I'm going to get some validation on that answer. Nice, I got that check. One is correct. Great. If I type in one here and push return, I get that X that it's wrong. So I can go back in here and change it to two. And here I see the answer, and when I click in there, I still see the answer. And I can say, oh no, it was not that, uh, so I have to change that. Notice as I, I hit delete to clear any text that was in this input field, the placeholder text appears again. So if I think it's four and I get it wrong, I'm like, oh, I, I forgot the question. I can hit delete on my keyboard, and now I see it's one plus two is three, and I enter that in. And confetti comes down when when a student uh, has all all check marks on all the input fields on the canvas. You get this nice confetti effect that comes down on the polypod. Uh, I could go back into authoring mode. I just want to show uh, a few things. If I start from scratch here uh, and drag an input tile out again, let me get rid of these just to start over. The other thing that is possible. Uh, here again is to like change the placeholder text. So I could have it be this question mark. I could say like, enter your answer. I don't know why this seems uh, overly complicated, but just to show that that's a possibility. So you could say something like enter your answer here. Maybe it was multiple choice question or something and you wanna make it really clear that that's where the answer goes. So I have entered uh, A as the solution. Maybe there's some big, like text box here that has your question. And then when I go out of authoring mode, I could go in here, enter my answer, and I see that's correct, because it's the only one on the screen, the confetti comes down as well. Um, great, so that's how the input tile works and the text area tile works. This is doing it on Polypad. Uh, all of these can also be used inside of Activity Builder. So if you're looking to get validation inside of Activity Builder. You could do that as well, and then you can, you can export the validation via computation layer, so it shows up on the teacher dashboard inside of Activity Builder. If that's something you're interested in learning more about, you should go to the tutorial menu, and there is a section called Activity Builder that has a really brief overview here, but then some videos and some links to even more information about using Polypad inside of Activity Builder.
Great. Thanks very much for watching. Hope this video was helpful. Drop any questions or feedback in the comments or get in touch with us across a variety of our social media channels or any of the other ways uh, you can communicate with us.